We were the only Indian family in our small southern town. I was teased every day for being brown. What's up, guys? Bowtie Owl back again. In the theater of politics, every gesture, every word is part of the performance. Nikki Haley, a seasoned diplomat and now a contender for the presidency, recently shared a compelling tale with NBC News, recounting a youth marred by the daily trials of looking different, brown in her case, in a small southern town. Her background checks out, but maybe not her story. But before we get to the analysis, be sure to go check out my Twitter at bowtied underscore owl. I cover all sorts of things related to body language, tips, tricks, ideas, how to be more social, how to communicate better as an introvert, etc. It's free to do. Don't miss out. With that said, let's get into the analysis. We were the only Indian family in our small southern town. I was teased every day for being brown. Let's watch that again as a narrate here. I want you to look for a subtle suggestion of a smirk. It happens a couple times. And it's intriguing, especially considering she's about to share a story deeply rooted in personal negative emotions. This faint, almost imperceptible expression raises questions. What could be the reason behind this fleeting smirk in such a context? Nikki begins her narrative setting the scene of isolation amidst the backdrop of brown skin in a white society. As we zoom in on the scene, we notice the subtle cues of a seasoned storyteller, her eyes wide as if to invite the audience into her soul, might be less of an imitation and more of a dramatization, perhaps magnifying the truth for effect. The widening of eyes, traditionally a sign of stress or surprise in this context, might be an exaggerated cue, an overture to the audience of her emotional state. Haley's head movements punctuate her script with exaggerated nods and emphatic tilts that accentuate her words with more force than perhaps the truth requires. And there's an art to convincing an audience, and sometimes the performer might fear their story lacks weight, leading to an unconscious embellishment of physical expression to give their words gravity. So anyone that wants to question it can go back and look at what I've said on how hard it was to grow up in the deep south as a brown girl. So we fast forward to a critical juncture here at 20 seconds in, where the plot thickens, and her expression leaks a tangle of emotions. The furrowed brow the wide eyes, the downturned mouth, all classical elements of a dramatic climax. Yet one can't help but wonder if these are genuine markers of distress or if they've been carefully selected from a repertoire of emotional expressions to elicit a response from the audience. Anybody can look at my record and see when Walter Scott was shot down by a dirty cop, how I made sure that the Walter Scott family didn't suffer because we put the first body camera bill in the country in place. Anybody can look at the fact that when we had nine amazing souls die in Mother Emanuel Church, I did something that no Republican or Democrat ever wanted to touch, which was call for the Confederate flag to come down because it would take two thirds of the House and Senate and was an impossible feat. I don't know what you're implying with that, but what I will tell you is saying that I had black friends is a source of pride. Saying that I had white friends is a source of pride. If you want to know what it was like growing up, I was disqualified from a beauty pageant because I wasn't white or black because they didn't know where to put me. So look, I know the hardships, the pain that come with racism. It's the reason that I fight bullies every day when it comes to racism, anti-Semitism, or hate, and I always will. So now we get a moment of intrigue at around a minute 20, and she says, the hardships and pain that come with racism, it's the reason I fight bullies every day when it comes to racism, anti-Semitism, or hate. And you should notice something here. Her head shakes no when the script demands a yes, and it's a subtle but significant deviation from the expected choreography a potential slip in the narrative that introduces doubt. Is this a mere misstep or a revealing glimpse into the true story behind the curtain? And as the act draws to a close, we witness a break in eye contact, a momentary retreat from the gaze of our audience and panelists. It's a break in character, perhaps, a sign that even the most practiced performer can find the weight of a narrative heavy, particularly if the narrative is woven with threads of embellishment. If I didn't mention slavery on that day, it's because that's an automatic. There's always been, the Civil War's always been known about slavery. In the end, the performance of Nikki Haley leaves us with an after image of a story told with a flourish, a tale that might have stepped beyond the boundaries of every day into the realm of dramatic, where exaggeration takes a hand of truth and they dance together, blurring the lines between reality and artifice. Short and quick video for you guys, but if you want to learn more about body language, don't forget to like, share, and follow for more content like this. Be sure to download your free copy of Read the Room using the link in my bio. 
or the description below. It's a comprehensive guide to understanding nonverbal communication and applying this knowledge will revolutionize your personal and professional relationships. Thanks for watching. Until next time.